Robert decided to dig into the personal finances of our great leaders, and perhaps not surprisingly, he learned that just because you're sitting in the White House, it doesn't mean you're a great budgeter. That's so you true. have some lessons for us today from presidents past. Yes, and so the formula for financial success, we kind of all know, it's live below your means, avoid debt, and diversify your investments. Probably all know that. We don't always uh, follow those rules, and neither do all our past presidents. So I'm going to give you five examples of presidents who didn't exactly follow those. Number one, Ulysses S. Grant. Anyone know what the S stands for? Anyone? Anyone? Not Saver. Yeah, that's true. And it actually stands for nothing. That really wasn't oh. his, his name. Was Hiram Ulysses Grant, but then when a congressman nominated him for West Point, he put Ulysses S. Grant, and he just decided to stick with it. Nonetheless, after his presidency, he was um, went on a very lavish tour around the world, spent too much of his money, and then he invested $100,000 into a brokerage firm that was started by his son and a friend. Unfortunately, that friend was borrowing using the securities in the investment firm as collateral. We've talked a little bit about this. That's great if everything goes up. If not, then your collateral becomes worth nothing. Is this the leveraging thing we talked about? Leverage is margin. Margin, like margin on margin. Okay, on margin. Sorry. So things went south, investments get wiped out, Grant puts a little bit more money in, he loses everything. So towards the end of, the end of his life, he is pretty much penniless. Mark Twain convinces him to write his memoirs, which oh. he finishes before he dies. In the end, those royalties um, earn almost a half a million dollars for his family. He was dead, but he does have the largest mausoleum in North America. So while you can't take it with you, you can live in something that your money paid for. How's that? You can huh? leave it behind. You can leave it behind for other people to visit and see your bones. Number four, Harry S. Truman. S stands for? It's not Saver. <laughs> no, nothing. Again. It's, his middle name is S. Oh. To honor two of his grandparents. Anyways, uh, so young guy, he invests in a mineral company, an oil company, loses everything. Fights in World War One. He starts a men's clothing store in Kansas City with one of his army buddies. Huh. That goes under eventually. I think he, he has to live with his in-laws. Then gets into public service, is the president, comes out of the, of the presidency without actually not much money. Um, so in, I think it was 1958, it was the first time Congress enacted a pension for presidents. And part of it was, they think, out of sympathy for Harry S. Truman, who really didn't have much money. And when Medicare um, was signed into law in 65, Johnson signed it at the Harry S. Truman Library, and Harry and Bess were the first Medicare, first two people to get Medicare cards. So they were definitely people who needed the help of the government. Uh, so the third president, William Henry Harrison, ninth president, you probably don't know much about him because he has the distinction of being, anyone, anyone, the president with the shortest um, That's right. He gave a speech. He died because he contracted something from his inaugural right. speech, he, right? He, he served as president for like 32 days. Um, and his problem, he was a farmer. He went off to be basically the ambassador to Colombia. While he was gone, the crops failed. His sons didn't manage it very well, so he came back to a lot of debt. Um, so by the time he was president and died, he actually didn't have a whole lot of money. This was the guy who is like, it was really, really cold, and he's like, I don't need a coat. I'm just going to give my speech because I'm a tough man. And right. then he died. And then he died. There's some debate about whether actually that's how he got the pneumonia. But regardless, he was not president very long. Number two, Thomas Jefferson. We all know him. He was, um, but he's huge in Virginia. He was, and at one point was one of the wealthiest people in Virginia. But like a lot of people who own land and property, you can be... Land wealthy and cash poor. Right. So he owed a lot of money, um, and he also had expensive tastes. Building Monticello was not cheap. Um, he was owed a lot of money by other people. He wasn't great at collecting it. He signed loans for other people that he eventually became responsible for. Towards the end of life, he came up with a scheme in which he would, was going to have a lottery by which someone could win some of his property. I think it was even his estate. He got talked out of that. But by the time he passed away, he owed what I think that then was $100,000, which now would be you know, millions of dollars. Yeah. Um, and his heirs basically didn't get anything. All his stuff had to be sold. All right, time for number one. And time for number one. And this is the success Does story that of the president. Sound like a drum roll. Yeah, that was. By the way, President's Day. I don't know if you knew this. Is actually not an official holiday, federal-wise. It's actually Washington's birthday officially. 
oh. in the federal books. States have it as President's Day. So we're going to end here with Washington, oh. uh, who also had a lot of land. Yes, not far from here, like eight miles That's from here. That's true. Uh, he, fort- he, he made the wise decision of marrying Mary Custis, who at the time was one of the wealthiest women in Virginia. He still was in a lot of debt, eventually got paid off because he inherited some money. But even when he went to his inauguration in New York City for the first inauguration, he had to borrow money to be able to get up there. Wow. The smart thing that he did was tobacco farming actually was not that profitable. What he did was he diversified his investments, living on the Potomac. He saw those fish going by and thought, you know what, I got to make money from the fish. So he had a fishery. He also eventually built what was one of the biggest whiskey distilleries in the country, down by the grist mill. Those of us at the Motley Fill know, yeah, that. know that. Right. So by doing all of those things, in the end, he ended up being debt free and being very wealthy when he passed away. Oh, so that was a success story. That's the success story. Oh. From for the president who had to borrow money to get to his own inauguration to being a wealthy guy when he passed away. And nowadays, once you're done being a president, you go on a speaking tour, you go work for some lobbying firm. You got it good. Like the money starts rolling in after you're done being president. You do. 